Welcome to YPS Nativ online study for the Noahide Mitzvahs and Lifestyle Course. I'm Rod Bryant and we're going to be talking about prayer today. We're going to combine the next two lessons, prayer one and two, into one uh, video just because it's just easier to con condense them down uh, for the purpose of not belaboring the issue with too long of a class. It can be covered actually quite concisely. In the last 16 lessons, uh, we have devoted ourselves to the foundation concept of understanding the sources and derivations and guiding principles of the Noahide laws. With this 16th lesson, we're now going to delve into the practice of Noahide. And the first lesson in this new section will cover Noahide prayer. Let's first examine obligations in prayer. In Judaism, prayer exists on two levels, uh, fixed communal prayers and personal spontaneous prayers. The fixed communal prayers require Jews to gather and pray three times a day facing east toward Jerusalem. Now, these prayers are not personal prayers, but are fixed prayers with specific texts that are said on behalf of the Jewish community. Now, these prayers were established in the place of the three-time daily sacrifices that were presented in the temple by the Kohanim. Personal prayer, however, is spontaneous and may be said in any language using any words and at any time. Both forms of prayer are required and expected by God for the Jewish people. So the next question should be asked, what about the Noahides? Neither the Talmud nor Maimonides mentions prayer of any type as being an obligation for Noahides. At least in one earlier authority, however, did recognize such an obligation. Rav Geon, in his commentary on the Torah, lists prayers as one of the expanded obligations of the Noahide laws. A contemporary of Rav Gaon is Rabinu Nisim of Gaon. He does not list prayer as an obligation, but he implies this in his writing. He quotes, not all the seven laws and their derivations require revelation. For example, the obligation to recognize God, to obey Him, and the obligation to serve Him, all of which are rational and can logically be derived. The Hebrew term used by Rabbi Nunez for serving God is le'avdo, is usually understood as a specific reference to prayer. It is possible, though, that Rav, uh, Rabbi Nunez is using the term in its more general sense, meaning simply to serve Hashem. Nevertheless, the general idea conveyed by the passage is a concept true to both Jews and to Noahides that we are obligated to observe many principles by force of logic and reason alone without any specific revelation. Let me give a couple examples. Jews are required to make blessings before and after eating and drinking. The Talmud explains that the source of this obligation is logic rather than revelation. Similarly, the obligation for Noahides to pray is not a source of any particular textual derivation, but is rooted in the reason. Curiously, though, it is not mentioned in the writings of Maimonides or in the Rema Mi Fanu's statement on the Noahide laws. This omission is odd considering that non-Jewish prayer is referred to many times in the Tanakh and Scripture. Here's an example. On the verse, Rashi remarks that the temple is the house of prayer not only for Jews, but for all peoples. Also, praise the Lord, all nations, extol Him, all the people. And we see these verses that prayer is expected for non-Jews as well. Rav Moshe Feinstein, in his response in, on Noahide practice, puts prayer into perspective. According to Rabbi Feinstein, Noahides have no regular obligation to, to uh, prayer. This is obviously in contrast to the Jews who are required to pray daily facing east. Rather, all Noahide prayer is of the unfixed and personal type mentioned above. For Noahides, prayer is only a mitzvah when performed in response to a personal need or circumstances. If one experiences challenges for which he does not pray, this lack of response is tantamount to a denial of God and His sovereignty as the ruler of all things and in all events. When one does pray in such circumstances, it demonstrates a reliance and, and belief in the Creator. When a Noahide prays to give thanks or praise absent a personal need, he still receives reward for such a prayer, even though it is not the same nature as prayer prompted by personal needs. It appears 
that many early authorities do not list prayer as an obligation due to its free, unfixed nature and due to it being derived from uh, reason rather than revelation or textual exegesis. In summary, Jews have regular obligations to prayer regardless of their personal needs or circumstances. Noahites have no regular or particular obligation to pray. Rather, prayer is a response to personal needs or circumstances is obligated by force of reason. For this prayer, they receive reward for having performed such a mitzvah. Nevertheless, prayer in praise of God for his might and for having created all things is still a mitzvah and rewarded even though it is entirely uh, voluntarily. Let's look at texts of the prayers. As with all personal prayers, there is no fixed text for Noahide prayers. Since Noahide prayers is essentially personal prayer, it is ideally expressed using sincere words from the heart. However, we all sometimes need help jump-starting our prayers. In such case, using a, a text can be a tremendous help. Many Noahides have asked about the use or using the standard Jewish prayer book, the Siddur, uh, for their personal prayers. Uh, the core liturgy of the Siddur was established in the 4th century BCE. The men of the Great Assembly were the ones responsible for drawing up this material. This was a group of scholars and prophets under the leadership of Ezra who rebuilt and reestablished the Jewish practice in the Holy Land following the destruction of the temple, that is, the first temple. After the destruction of the second temple, the prayer book underwent a number of subsequent revisions to reflect the situation of the diaspora of the Jewish people. The result is a prayer book specifically tailored to the unique obligation and needs of the Jewish people in exile. As such, most of the Siddur is not relevant to Noahides. For example, the Siddur is replete with prayers for the return of Israel and the prayers invoking the merit of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. A Noahide cannot recite these passages since Noahides do not have a share in the land of Israel or in the heritage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, let me pause and make a statement about that. There isn't a single rabbi that I, I know of that I have uh, been under their tutelage would say that if uh, a non-Jew would pray these prayers with the intent of them praying for Israel and praying that Israel would connect back to the land of their, of their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and understanding that as a Noahide, they are uttering these prayers on behalf of the Jewish people, that that would be wrong. One of the things that is often um, a reminder to the Noahide who would be reading the Siddur, if a rabbi would advise them, would say, make sure that your intent and understanding is pure, that as you read the text, know what is concerning the nation of Israel and what would not be concerning the nation of Israel. Now, additionally, Many passages refer to mitzvahs that only apply to those within the Jewish lineage. For these reasons, it is preferable, advisable, that Noahides do not use the Jewish prayer book. Nevertheless, there are a few sections of universal application, and we'll take a look at these in these lessons. The reason why that it is important for us to understand the, the delineation between the obligation of prayer for the Jews and the obligation of things that Jews should pray for and the lack of obligation for the non-Jew is that when you're praying the Siddur, we want to honor the Torah. We want to honor the laws that apply for both Jew and then for non-Jew. And so when we use the Siddur, there are lessons or there are sections of the Siddur that can be prayed by an, uh, a Noahide. Instead, many rabbis have advised Noahides to use, for example, Psalms, that we call them Tehillim, as a prayer book. This, I would say, is probably one of the best books to use, is the book of Psalms. It's a collection of personal prayers by David and Melech, King David. This universal prayer book was actually, the, the, many of the prayers were in the temple, given in the temple. It gives a voice even to the most subtly nuanced needs of the soul. At the end of this lesson, uh, we have attached an index of psalms suitable for many occasions. So if you're wanting to take a look, there is a list of psalms, and there has, according to what event is going on in your life, the best psalm to pray. With that being said, 
there are some Noahides that want to use the Siddur. I, I would suggest to most Noahides that you have already captured the essence of your connection with the Creator through your personal prayer. The, the Brislavers, or Rabbi Nachman of Brislav, talks about Hitzbah de Dut, personal prayer, the power of going to the field and appealing to the Creator, blessed be He. In no way am I saying that uh, a non-Jew is going to be judged for using a Siddur, but most definitely one's personal prayer is the most powerful tool that you have, and don't think less of what it is. Look, the great sages of this faith and also the great patriarchs of the Jewish people committed themselves to personal prayer. And the first one I think of is Avraham, who would sit out in the cool of the day or in the hot desert sun, waiting for visitors to come and speaking to God. Now, despite the Siddur's general inapplicability to Noahides, it contains some of the material that is universal to both Jews and Noahides. In the past decades, there's also another book, and I, I'm trying to find out where it's at in my, my bookshelf. It's called uh, Brit Olam, which is done by uh, the World Noahide Center in Jerusalem. Either one of those would be adequate prayer books for uh, the non-Jew. But I would say that most would agree that there's nothing wrong with using the Siddur as long as the intent is uh, measured. Now, the book called The Order that will be available and its contents available to you as a student was most of the material of that prayer book is ex extracted from the Siddur. And uh, it's actually a more balanced approach. It's more focused. So it, it gives you a very specific thing uh, to look at and also it's, it's written in such a way it can be better understood. Practical advice on how to pray. And we kind of covered this just a minute ago. Prayer is more than just speaking to God. It, it is the establishment of a relationship. I would say that vastly all of the B'nai Noak understand this. You are actually here at this point in your life because you've discovered the power of personal prayer and the power of personal relationship and connection with Hashem. Now, like all relationship, it takes work and communication. Our sages in Tzadikim have established certain benchmarks for prayer to help us maximize a potential. Number one, identify your prayer. A prayer will always fall into one of three categories below. Identifying your prayer will help you to better understand prayer's purpose and helps to guide uh, one on how to speak to God and to articulate what is in their heart. The sages have identified three modes of prayer. Let's look at them. A. Request. Asking God for one's need or for the needs of others. This includes both spiritual and physical needs. Let me just say that with, one would ask, if God knows everything about you, why would we need to make a request? And first of all, this request is not about informing Hashem of a particular tragedy or difficulty in one's life or another's life, but it is about connection. It's about bringing up that um, essential part of your spiritual life, and that is connecting to Hashem. Second, praise or praise. Praising God for uh, abilities that are unique to Him alone. For example, praising God for His creation, for the sun, for the heavens and for his ability to give life and heal sickness. I, I know that there have been many times that I have been in a fresh pool of water, say uh, a beautiful river that is clear and, and, and pristine. I can't help but uh, bless Hashem and thank Him for the pure water. No, I'm not using a Siddur to do it, but from the depths of my heart, I'm expressing a tremendous amount of praise that Hashem only, is the creator of the universe and the one who sustains the universe by the power of his word. C is this idea of thanks, expressing gratitude to God for all that he's done on behalf of a petitioner, someone who, who has prayed for another. I'm just reminded recently of someone who called a friend of my spouse's and my wife sent the text to me and I forwarded it to the rest of the community. One was wanting us to request prayer for their son-in-law. Now this person is not a Noahide and not particularly very religious, but felt if there's anybody that can pray and have prayers that are answered, it would be my friend in their community. And this person was on oxygen, was not doing well. The nurses were not giving a good prognosis, was on oxygen, 
and they were considering putting him on life support. Someone in the community asked, well, what's the full name of this man's uh, mother so that we can pray properly for them? And of course, the prayers went up. We were told only two weeks later that this young man left the hospital off the oxygen the very next day. And this woman was beside herself with such gratitude because people decided to pray. Now, regardless of what people who say they only trust science would say, there's power in prayer. And I would even venture to say there have been great studies within science that shows the power of prayer, the power of unified thought to bring about healing for an, uh, another person. Here's an example of expressing gratitude for, uh, to God. For example, your health, uh, family, friends, livelihood. A prayer should be verbalized. By verbalizing our prayers, we are forced to give a voice and articulation to our most important concerns. I've often heard people say, well, I don't really need to say the words because God knows my thoughts. Absolutely. But the reason why that articulation is important is not on behalf of the creator of the universe. For crying out loud, God knows your thoughts even before you present them. So why do we need to ver verbalize them? There is a psychological and spiritual aspect to verbalizing our prayers and saying them. It is important also that as you articulate them, you articulate them in such a way that you are presenting them to the master of the universe. You're not just speaking empty words. Empty words is something we should avoid. This is actually probably the, uh, the practice of pagans, where they shout and scream and say repetitious words that have no real deep meaning. They're conjuring up something. We don't do that. In the Noahide world, in Noahidism, in Judaism, our prayers are articulated in such a way that we give honor to both the prayer that is given and to God, who is the ultimate recipient. We speak to God as a king, as the master of the universe. Even though he's close, he's not our buddy, we should address him as the king of the universe. Something else we should do is set, a time, uh, set aside regular time for reflection and prayer. Uh, there are those who prefer early morning to get up in the morning and to spend quiet time with Hashem, doing personal prayers, maybe reading Psalms. This is a very important thing. The Noahides are not obligated to set certain times of prayer. It for sure is very important. Establishing regular times of prayer in spiritual reflection is intrinsic to the spiritual life of Jews and non-Jews alike. Now, this personal time should be fixed, regular, and sacred. Well, what do we mean by that? Avoid having distractions in the room. Avoid the opportunity of being distracted either by people or telephones, etc., Make sure that you have all of that, uh, those things shut down so that you're not distracted. Some people use uh, the time to play instrumental sort of spiritual music, or maybe they'll listen to Jewish uh, or, or Hasidic nagoons or prayer uh, music that is set to certain uh, prayers and, and psalms. What a great opportunity. Use those opportunities to build up your spirit and then spend time in prayer. Some people don't want to be distracted by any type of music or sound at all. That's fine. Now, the place should be somewhere private and respectful. And we've said this in many occasions. We don't pray in the bathroom. We don't pray in and in, in around filth. Now, mind you, Hashem can hear our prayers in the bathroom. The issue is, is it's a place of filth. It's a place where you're dispensing of filth. And we don't want to associate the blessed name the creator of the universe in that space. So we don't pray in the bathroom. Now, the beauty of Noahide is, is it, uh, that you know what you have to do, but have a good amount of freedom to personalize it. Th there is no need for a Noahide to have to go down to a synagogue to pray three times a day. However, if a Noahide wants to do that and pray specifically during the times of the Jewish prayers, no problem. It's not an issue at all. The only thing you should understand, you're not obligated to do that. You're doing this purely out of your devotion and love for Torah and the love for the Jewish people and the love for Hashem. Making a point of praying for all of your needs throughout the day is another concept. God provides everything. Even things appearing to come solely by the hand of man are still provided by God. We have this discussion often in our Q&A sessions that everything is by the hand of Hashem. And if everything is by the hand of Hashem, uh, what 
am I recognizing? I'm recognizing that both the good and the bad, and even the mundane things of life, come by the hand of Hashem. The very fact that I wake up and breathe every morning, of course, the air in our lungs is from the hands of Hashem. But how about the next time that you go to pump uh, gas into your vehicle and realize that you have funds to be able to pay for gas? Well, most people would just say, well, I have funds because I worked hard and I get paid. Well, our ability to work hard is actually dependent upon the master of the universe giving you the strength to do so. So when you pump gas the next time, when you do something very mundane, take time to bless Hashem, to thank Hashem for giving you the ability to do those things. How about thanking Him for relationships and people that you know? Very important. It is appropriate to pray for all of your needs, whether great or small, physical or spiritual. I would even say silly or serious. Anything a person has is only a result of the master of the universe. Even the small things. How about taking out a piece of candy or your favorite chip or your favorite drink and you take a sip of it and you take time to bless the master of the universe for giving you the opportunity to have that level of richness in your life. We also can remember there are a lot of people in the world that we live may not have those same kind of privileges. And we should thank Hashem for every, everything that we have. Prayer is directly and only to the one true God and the creator of all things. Now, Noahide and Judaism both reject the idea of praying to or through an intermediary. We don't pray to statues. We don't pray to idols. We don't pray to saints. Now, we've had often someone mention, well, what about uh, Jews who go to the tomb of the Rebbe or go to the uh, tomb of a great sage, a rabbi, and they say a prayer? This is not the same. However, I have heard people that are not Noahides, they are uh, Christians, who would beg to argue that, no, that's no different than us praying to Jesus. It is absolutely different in the sense that we believe that that Zadik, a righteous man, that we can go and pray in his merit because that he has done so many amazing things that we can go and pray in his merit. Well, look, this is also done when we pray for a Jewish person. We ask for their mother's name, and we pray in the merit of that mother's name. Or how about that we pray in the merit of someone else in our lives? This is not praying to an individual. You've got to make sure that you understand that distinction. Additionally, we're only to pray envisioning God as the single unity, not uh, an entity with multiple forms and expressions. These concepts uh, of a desperate God, or disparted God, I'm sorry, on, of an intermediary or idolatrous idea is prohibited for Jews and Noahides alike. All you need to connect with God is your prayers, your intention, your mind, your soul, and God. The following, and I won't go through all of them, is an index of suggested psalms. And the following index to psalm is, is compiled from a number of sources. You will find slight variations in practice and customs as to which psalms are recited and which occasions. Uh, when multiple psalms are given for one particular need, it is preferable that they all be said. This may be done either all at once or over a period of time or maybe during throughout the day. This is only a recommendation. However, a little said with concentration and intent is better than a whole lot said without the proper intention. What did I say before? Babbling on saying empty words with no intentions means nothing on your connection with Hashem. Remember, prayer is about connecting to the Blessed One, and prayer is the intent to connect to the Blessed One. If you're just merely uttering words that even may have meaning, but without intent, it means nothing. Now, going down through the daily Psalms, I will quickly skim over this, and you have the details there. Now, daily Psalms uh, that we should recite. Now, remember, these also appear in the Siddur and are prayed by the Jewish people and are intended to pray daily. One or two or all of them during the day, it's your choice. Psalm 67, 100, 145, 146, 150, and Psalm 20. Uh, here, the Psalms for specific days, in addition to daily Psalms, 
Each day has its own specific psalm, including the work of creation accomplished in the day. The psalm for the seventh day depicts the future messianic era. Each of these psalms are recited by the Levites on its corresponding day in the ancient temple. Today, we continue the tradition of reciting these daily psalms, and you can see the list Sunday uh, through Saturday. There is a psalm for after a full meal. A full meal is defined by one in which eaten bread and and, uh, sometimes wine, especially when one eats bread. Here is a list of some psalms. Here are a list of psalms for God's guidance, Psalm 16, 19, and Psalm 139. How about for your livelihood? Here's a list of psalms for your livelihood. When we talk about wanting to have a, a prayer book to kind of get you jump-started, these psalms are probably some of the best that you could have. How about for success? Psalm 57, Psalm 112, Psalm 122. Here's another one for a favorable judgment. You're going to apply for a job or you're asking for favor on a project that you're working. Three fantastic psalms that you can read. Psalms for help in the time of need. Here's a whole list of them. Uh, For being rescued, Psalm 124. For thanksgiving of a miracle, Psalm 18. For repentance, Psalm 51 and Psalm 90. For one uh, finding a spouse, here's several great psalms. On the day of one's marriage, Psalm 19, Uh, Psalm 102 and 103, uh, to have children, to give birth, Psalm 20. For recovery from illness, here are are five or six great psalms that you can use. The expression of gratitude, whole list of psalms. For peace, Psalm 46. When you go visit the land of Israel and or when you find the land of Israel is in danger, Psalm 83, 130, and 142. Nice safe journey at a cemetery. Here are some psalms to uh, read. Now, let's go through a summary of this lesson on Noahide daily prayer 1 and 2. Noahides have an obligation, or has an obligatory mitzvah to pray in response to their needs and circumstances. This prayer has no fixed text or times are set. It is proper to offer our prayers or praise or gratitude. These volunteer prayers are likely personal and have no fixed times or text. The Siddur, the Jewish prayer book, is mostly not applicable to the non-Jews or to uh, Noahides. It contains some universal segments, which we will examine in a later lesson. And the book of Psalms is a universal prayer book. I mean, if you want a prayer book, the book of Psalms is the best and most widely suggested text for the Noahide prayers. Now, we talked about three types of prayer. As a conclusion, this lesson we review. Number one is, or A, request, B, praises, and C, thanks. I would say that if you use this three foundational formula in your daily prayer, you will have nailed it. A prayer should be verbalized, we've learned that, rather than perform through, through being alone. Prayer is, should be verbalized and performed by yourself and it should be done openly. One should set aside regular time for spiritual reflection and prayer. One should pray for all things, whether physical, spiritual, great or small, even things that are what we call, uh, uh, maybe you would think are not very important. One should pray only and directly to God, not to any other entity or through another entity, very important. Now, let's sum this up. You're a Noahide. You got here because you have mastered the art of personal prayer. Brislav calls it Hitzbadadut, personal prayer. It's a concept of going into the field, going into the woods, going to a secluded place and pouring your heart out to Hashem. I would venture to say the reason why every one of the Noahides that are here that are taking this class, they are here, you are here, because you've taken time to pour your heart out before the master of the universe and not because you followed some formula in a book. A siddur is fantastic, but even for the Jewish people, they're required to do personal prayer. It's important that we all connect to Hashem. Why is prayer so important? It's not just a mechanism to show up and to show off. It's a mechanism to connect to the Blessed One. So as we conclude this section on prayer, and we'll go on into detail in other sections, I want to encourage you to, to elevate yourself in your prayer time. Elevate yourself in the time of devotion to the Master of the Universe and ask Hashem to guide you, guide you in wisdom, and He will. 
And until next class, we'll see you. Shalom.